I'm Dr. Suzanne Murray. I'm the director of Smithsonian's Global Health Program. The definition of One Health has changed over the years. A decade ago when the term was first coined, I think it referred to the uh, constellation and the connection between human health, animal health, and environmental health. And over the last decade, I think it's morphed to include more of a multidisciplinary approach to addressing some of the world's largest problems. And by that, I mean that there's really room for everyone in addressing some of these issues. Everyone from museum specialists to virologists, MDs, DVMs, PhDs, nurses, and increasingly communities. If we're gonna be successful in addressing some of the world's outbreaks, the previous ones and the ones that we know are coming, we very much have to start from the beginning, including communities. So what One Health means to me as a Kenyan is the cycle of relationship between animals, humans, and the environment, that one thing can impact the other. One Health means to me that we understand the interconnected nature of health between ecosystems, wildlife, and humans. One Health to me is a multi-sectoral and transdisciplinary approach to ensuring that there's optimal health outcomes in wild animals, in the domestic animals, in our environment, and also to human health. My definition of One Health influences the way I approach my work. So my work revolves around understanding the epidemiology of rabies. And rabies is a zoonotic disease, so it can affect humans, domestic dogs, other mammals, including wild wildlife. And so in order to control rabies and understand its epidemiology, you need to understand it in humans, domestic animals, and wildlife alike. Training the next generation is why I do my job. This is the most rewarding aspect of my life. I mean, it sounds a bit of a cliche, but uh, I came for the biology and I stayed for, for the community. My work is contributing towards rhino health and conservation, meaning that black rhinos are critically endangered. Me and my team are trying to understand which are the best uh, procedures, which are the best drugs to be used in the rhinos, and that they will avoid getting diseases that could lead to mortality. Mentorship is incredibly important to me. I've had mentors in my life that took time to really train me, be a better researcher. Someone gave me this opportunity to advance my career, to give me that shot, to get my foot in the door. And it's important that I pay that forward. We have to take special focus on reaching out to our first generation students, the women and underrepresented minorities in science that typically are left out from these opportunities. And we have to provide this mentorship in ways that can provide access as well as opportunity. One Health is um, the way of the future and it keeps on changing. But my greatest epiphany moment was when I saw this paper and where we've collected sticks um, in the landscape for the last uh, eight, 10 years and they were able to analyze and you were able to see what the ticks are feeding on humans, wildlife and livestock. As disease ecologists, we apply One Health to try and understand how pathogens affected by changes in the environment. And as a result, we really apply One Health in a systems approach. So we're interested in understanding how top-down environmental changes, climate change or human activities, affect the dynamics, biology and ecology of animals and how this can filter down to affect the health of humans through the pathogens that those animals carry. The development and support of this next generation, the One Health Workforce Next Generation, which is the folks that are going to be at the front line in addressing the world's largest health issues, this is predicated upon strong partnerships. Trustful, healthy, strong partnerships. That's a lot of what we're working on on the One Health Workforce Next Generation project through USAID, led by UC Davis and with strong support from Smithsonian.